Hi, I'm Tony Pinelli with the Verbal Defense and Influence, and today I want to talk to you about the persuasion sequence and the four appeals. So, the persuasion sequence operationalizes the five maxims, and the steps of the, of the persuasion sequence are ask, don't tell, explain the reason why, what, what the, why, why they have to do it, what the rule is, and do they understand the rule? Then we want to give options. We want to give positive options, followed by negative options, and then we want to refocus them on the positive. And then we want to confirm the non-compliance by asking them if there's anything we can say to get them to go along with the program, get them to do something specifically. We'd like to think, think so, and then act appropriately according to your rules of engagement, your agency, and so forth. So that is based on the four appeals. There's only four ways that you can appeal to someone. That first appeal is the ethical appeal. Ethical appeal is where you're asking them to do something. And if they believe in you, they'll do it. That is The ethical appeal is where you establish your rapport with that client, your relationship with that client. They gotta believe in you. Probably not gonna do it, but you gotta ask first, that's ethical. The second one is rational appeal. Very necessary when we're setting the context. We have to set the context with the use of reason by answering the question why. Now, very powerful, but probably the weakest appeal because when people are upset, they're under the influence of rage, anger, fear, frustration, mental illness, whatever, they're probably not going to do that. But very necessary to be rational and set that rule that we have to do, the reason why, and so forth. Next is personal. The personal appeal. Personal appeal is... Does a person have something to gain or lose? That's also known as the greed principle. People are selfish in nature. And if there's something in it for them, they'll choose that positive option. They'll go along with the program. So again, we want to make sure that we present positive options, then negative, and then refocus the positive because we want to use that greed principle. If a person has something to gain or lose, we have something to use. And last... The practical appeal. The practical appeal is the, the use of that offbeat strategy. That question that they don't expect to see coming when you say, is there anything I can say at this time to get you to go with us, do what I'm asking you to do specifically, I'd like to think so. That's powerful. That, that, I mean, you know, that offbeat strategy gives them the option and the final word on what we're going to do. Then we take action appropriately, whatever it might be. And, and it all depends on your agency, your rules, your regulations, and so forth. The last thing I want to talk about is persuasion and where it comes from. When we teach verbal defense and influence, this is nothing new. This is age old. This, this dates back to the days of Aristotle and his teaching on persuasion and ethics. And what Aristotle said was that if you appear ethical to somebody and you can appeal to them by what they have to gain or lose, you can persuade them to do almost anything. So remember, persuasion sequence follows these four, these four appeals. When you're asking somebody to do something, you're appealing to them ethically. When you're explaining the reasons why, that's a rational appeal. When you're giving them options, the greed principle, if they have something to gain or lose, that's presenting the options, <laughs> positive and negative. That's rational appeal. And practical is the offbeat strategy. Sometimes it might be a little humorous when you ask them, is there something I can say at this time to get you to do what I'm asking you to do? I'd like to think so. That's the persuasion sequence and the appeals.